Why do they call this a breaker and a half bus configuration? What is the reliability and flexibility of this configuration? And finally, what advantages and disadvantages does this bus configuration have? This is what we will try to answer in this video. Before we get started, if you're new to my channel, my name is Daniel and I'm an electrical engineer based in Texas. And on DC Engineering, we explore and expand our knowledge on all things related to substation design and engineering. Let's get into the video. Let's start off with some component identifiers and definitions. In the upcoming slides, I will be showing you circuit breakers, disconnect switches, and bus. Additionally, for illustration purposes, components shown in red will be energized, and components shown in blue will be de-energized. This will clearly show the outcomes of faults, and finally, I want to define some terms I will be using. Reliability and flexibility. A substation's reliability is determined by its ability to remain energized in the event of a fault. For example, if there is a fault on the bus and the whole substation goes down, then reliability is low. A substation's flexibility is determined by its ability to remain energized during changing conditions. For example, if a single breaker in the substation needs to be serviced, will the whole substation need to be de-energized? Or can you do a partial outage where customers downstream are not affected by this? The breaker and a half bus configuration consists of two buses, each normally energized. Between the two buses are three circuit breakers, and between each of the breakers you can find a line, aka a circuit. These lines can either be sources or loads. Three circuit breakers are used in the bay for two independent lines. When someone says a bay, they are referring to the column shown in orange. This would be bay 1, and the column next to it would be bay, would be bay 2, and so on. Each line shares a common circuit breaker. In other words, one and a half circuit breakers are used for each line. Hence the name breaker and a half. Let's check the reliability. If we were to have a fault on line 1, then breakers 1 and 2 would trip and isolate the fault. This would allow the five other lines to operate and not be affected. Let's take that same scenario and add in that breaker two, the shared breaker, had a breaker failure, meaning it failed to trip. If this were the case, then breaker three would trip, causing lines one and four to go down and allow the other four lines to operate normally. Let's look at a similar scenario, but let's assume the bus side breaker, breaker one, failed to trip. Then breakers four, seven, along with two, would need to trip to isolate the fault. But what's cool about this configuration is that even with so many breakers down, lines two, three, four, five, and six can operate because of bus two. The last scenario is if there is a bus fault. For this, let's assume that bus one had a fault. If this were the case, then breakers one, four, and seven would trip to isolate the fault, ultimately making this system very high on the reliability scale. Well, let's determine the flexibility. Let's assume that circuit breaker one needs to be removed from service for maintenance none of the lines would experience an outage because of the configuration. Let's assume that bus 1 needs to be removed from service for maintenance. None of the lines would experience an outage, making this configuration high on the flexibility scale. The advantages of the breaker and a half configuration are very high reliability, very flexible operation, easy to, to expand. Disadvantages of the, this configuration include large amount of land is required, high cost, complex protective relaying and control, and the application of the breaker and half configuration is, for, is generally for substations from 230 kV and above. Bonus tip time, I'll be adding some practical tips at the end of my videos that really help me feel more confident in my field. For today, the tip is to use OneNote. Use OneNote to help organize your thoughts. I still struggle with this one, but my hope is that through documenting my process, my thought process in OneNote, in the future I can reference my notes and finish the task faster. I'm confident that if I work towards making my own checklists and templates, it will streamline my job. All right, friends, we just talked about the breaker and a half bus configuration, advantages, disadvantages, the reliability and the flexibility of this conf configuration. If you haven't, check out this playlist of different substation configurations. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.